It is I, CarQ. I'm live on Twitch right now. It's twitch.tv slash CarQ. And we have hot takes for the week. I'm doing this week's live. I don't always do these live. I record a lot of them offline. But this time around, it happens to be live. So if you send a hot take and it does get featured in the YouTube comments or on Discord, you're going to have a thousand extra people either make fun of you or really agree with your take, whether they're hot or cold. Your yes and your no. Here we go. First one. The new Sombra rework is actually a buff. Opportunist is back with virus. Damage doesn't end your invis. You just need to position yourself correctly now as you would with any dive character. Sombra's been out for three days now, and I think the consensus, it is not a buff. To say it is a buff, like net buff, is a hot take. I disagree with that. I do not think that is true. I think it is a small buff in certain aspects of the gameplay loop and in very specific matchups, okay? So let me break this down. First, I think it's a buff if you play with your team, and if they play ball or doom, and you AFK and stand there with a hack, and then you hack him and you do more damage to burn him down, that part's true. I had a Sombra player where we played against the ball. They had like 10,000 damage like before anybody else because they just sat there. There's no time to like, you know, go in the backline and stage. That being said, that's like two out of like the gazillion other matchups you can have, and you completely lose the whole like flanking and being completely stealth and going into the backline uh, aspect of it. Not completely, there are ways and certain maps and angles you can take, but for sure it kind of lends itself to a more passive play style. And it feels like you can do this flanker job on other heroes who are much more safe. The translocator and the stealth have a misaligned cooldown from five to seven seconds. And if you have any good team with a sense who is like somewhat smart and can sniff you out if you try any of the side flanking stuff, you are probably dead. You have to burn your translocator to get into a position if you are opting for that play style. I will say, if, if you can adapt and adjust your play style, there's a little bit of a learning curve right now. So a lot of Sombras I've seen in rank so far are feeding their brains out. Every Sombra I've played against, I've beaten. And every time I had a Sombra on my team, it was a not a starting Sombra. It was a let me swap to this because they for some reason are playing Doomfist. And it works out in that case. One thing that's really annoying is that with this Sombra nerf, there's more Widowmakers. So you kind of have to like pick your poison. Do you like playing against Widow or do you like playing against Sombra? Less Sombras means more Widows. Kind of rough. But I will say overall, I still think it's a small uh, net nerf. Uh, Opportunist is back. But I think we did the DPS calcs or one of my uh, mods uh, to put it in the Sombra what's it called subreddit with the spreadsheet and everything to like spend time to hack before shooting compared to like hacking into virus into shooting even with the 20 percent damage boost on most squishy targets it actually like evens out past a certain point it's like not that worth it because there's a reload time and everything this is assuming you hit all your bullets and hit your virus it is better to like pump damage into uh one of the tanks after the opportunist kicks in because you aren't missing any bullets but on average you are missing a lot of bullets so even with the 20 percent nerf 20 percent damage boost not so much that being said sombra is less frustrating to play against because she's not infinite stealth so people are like rejoicing right now but she is lethal if you are running into her and she is standing in there and can kill you but she is way more punishable now because she can't you know be everywhere and be infinitely stealth. I've made this argument though that I actually think for anybody who thinks it's a buff, it might be a buff to like an average gold or under somber player because now they don't spend half the game in stealth and wasting time because your average or below average play metal rank player may not be optimizing your their previous pathing anyways and this sombra kind of forces them to be more engaged at all times they're actually forced to just shoot the enemy and just ha they can't go in the back line and hack so they just stand there with their hands up and that's actually adding more value yeah than wasting time as old sombra and like running there waiting 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 and then like your whole team dies and you're like oh shit an indirect buff in that aspect but not really on the high end i haven't seen a good enough Sombra to like impress me yet. So I, I'm, I'm still reserved on saying it's a buff by any means, but yeah. She's just simply not as safe as any other dive or flanking character. Genji can deflect and dash out. Tracer is a bunch of blinks and recall. Sombra has just a translocator and it's like on a long seven second cooldown and it doesn't even go that far. If you have any sort of chase, and you're in a bad spot, you are dead. And you have to burn it initially to get into spots, so yeah. Hot take, characters people say are bad like Genji and Doom are actually really strong in the right hands and it's just people complaining that are sitting on the skill floor. Lukewarm take, I mean, there's heroes with the ceiling. Genji and Doom have a pretty high ceiling because they're extremely mobile. If you're really good at the hero, you can squeeze more out of them and they can certainly pop off. They are strong in the right hands, but there are times where um, they are genuinely bad. Even if you are like playing that hero really, really well, there are just some things that make Genji and Doom really unfun to play depending on the meta. 
So yeah, hot take, take all self shooting abilities out of the game. Bob, Sim turrets, Torb turrets, it's bullshit. All right, the fact that this was typed in all caps means you probably died to a random Torb turret. And this sounds like an emotionally charged hot take comment on the bottom of the YouTube comment section. They're not as overbearing. They've nerfed it a ton. They nerfed Torb turrets damage and made it so it's they put more power into his Cheetos versus his turrets because they are a little cheesy, but like you can shoot them and there are ways to play around him. He's venting for sure. He's venting. But no, I don't think you need to take them out. I think they're fine where they're at. I'm not terribly frustrated right now with Torb turret or Sim turret or Bob. Like Bob has counters. Bob can be slept. Bob can be burnt. I think it's okay right now. I'll take, I feel like getting exited at more. You mean excited? I feel like getting excited at more avoid slots and using them regularly is just accepting that it's skill issue. Like, I get why you would want to avoid people that throw your games or super toxic, but if you use it basically every time you feel like you had teammates performing bad, then it's just weird. Do you really face so many bad teammates in so many of your games that you need such a big amount of slots? If so, I would say you are the problem, not your team, because it changes every game, but your presence in your team doesn't. At this point, you need to look in the mirror. Wait, actually, pretty good take. I mean, you guys see, I, I stream a lot, I barely avoid people for that reason. If you, every time you have a bad teammate and you avoid every single game and have permanently all these slots, always every single game, I do think you need to look in the mirror because there are games where some people are performing poorly. And if, if you know, if that happens, I get why you would do it. But at the same time, people would like to deflect and think the only reason they lost was because of that teammate and not how they play. I do think it's a little questionable if every single game you do it. You can only see it with like publicly with some streamers and stuff, but not all of them. Like for me, I literally never open the avoid menu. Like 90 percent 99 percent of the time do you think there are times you need to like reflect and be like maybe it was me it was my bad i could have done this to help them but it's just a scapegoat thing to just avoid and think the option is there if you do it nothing changes for you like if they're always going to be in that pit anyways if they're just constantly swapping avoids it makes them feel better if they can avoid so i mean you do you i don't think it's a skill issue per se but it's just like a, a coping mechanism trying to min max and avoid and just like play the game man hot take overwatch players are the only ones to blame for roll queue the overwatch 2 community cannot be trusted to pick an actual team comp even league of legend players can be trusted to pick a real comp what do you mean overwatch players are a reason to blame for roll queue what roll queue was good for the game i think it was necessary league players can be trusted to pick a real comp oh because you can you say your position but then like you don't have to play there in the game you're not locked on your lane the game is different in that aspect you know i mean i don't know about you but i played league like you know 10 years ago i remember when people would be like jungle and the other person says i'm jungling and then they both go in the game and pick smite can league players really be trusted i don't know i've definitely had the rage double jungle warwick zin Zhao going I, I don't know about that that was also 10 years ago any active league players confirm or deny anyways the way that game plays like the gold scaling and everything even if you have people multi-laning it's sort of doable in the old roll queue if you had four dps's one support or zero supports you literally lose the game so i don't think there's any reason to say it's a take to blame people for roll queue i think roll queue was a natural evolution of the game and i think it is completely fine and necessary oh my god what is this this is a wall text hot take overwatch does not need more competitive modes and never really did i think the game works best when focusing on its core modes of payload hybrid and control which the game was built around with the slight exception of control because it came after it release i think blizz needs to ask themselves on who wants more modes among the many complaints i've heard about overwatch not one of them has been the lack of game modes to be clear i think the casual arcade modes are great and can be a place for the dev team and player base to try different ways of playing the game hey good example was uh the arcade junk and signs lab right however oversaturating the game with different modes only serves to raise the skill floor make hero balance more complicated and force players to play unbalanced modes in their competitive games that take the devs months if not years to waste precious dev time that could be spent on other things the community actually wants i think you're actually onto something i think didn't they say in a blog article unless i'm misremembering that they might slow down on the map stuff and the new game modes like we have clash that's the latest one and we had uh flashpoint but like i know clash has worked on for a long time and i think this might be it i don't know if they're adding any more modes that seem to be competitively viable i think adding more maps is fine for the modes we have but yeah i think after clash i think we're done here do we want another game mode is there any game mode that feels balanced i feel like people were not too happy right now with a clash b well flashpoint's okay but push they didn't like three new modes since overwatch 2 came out only ex one i like personally flashpoint push is okay here and there took a while for them to cook on that one sorry for the windows noise i don't think they need more modes you mean more more map game modes agreed all the other stuff is just casual and 
uh, limited time, kind of like competitive mystery heroes. If we're talking those kinds of modes, competitive mystery heroes, all that stuff. I can actually stay, but the queue times would be pretty long. I mean, that's not really hard to like spend dev time on. That's just a slider you can turn on with mystery heroes, but I think you mean dev time for new maps, but yeah. Uh, new modes, excuse me. I think it's fine. Runasapi was a decent push map release too. And uh, from here, we, we we stay here and we don't need any more. I think we have seven game modes. Control, Escort, Hybrid. Anyways, too many. Not a hot take. They said a molten take. Comp drives actually encourages people to derank or smurf to not have a lose streak and get hard stuck in the drive progress. I didn't play the competitive drive weekend at all to get that red name. A lot of people have it. I was not one of the people, so I don't know what people were doing and playing. People were encouraged to derank and smurf to not have a lose streak. So as far as I understood it, the drive was done if you were winning games. So the drive was encouraging people to derank or smurf. Why would you derank though? I don't understand this take. This seems like a very molten take. I agree. Again, I didn't play the weekend, so I have no clue where we're going with that one. I'm moving on. Sits in the lower priority and makes it easier to win more games. I think people, it just encourages people to queue up. I think the more frustrating thing, what it sounds like on paper with the drive was that people who don't normally play comp, play comp. And because the matchmaker isn't sure where to place them because they didn't have uh, much comp experience, they mostly play quick play. People were frustrated. They'd get a random like, you know, know gold teammate in their match that never touched a game of gold at the end of the day like people have to play eventually so it made a coin toss on someone who's never touched comp before i think that was a bigger point of criticism than people smurfing and throwing okay next hot take visual clutter isn't as much a, a negative as people make it out to be i think the chaos of it is part of the fun and a big reason why people fell in love with the game i think there's a fine line between this i think visual clutter is i think Wolfwatch does do a pretty good job with their their visual clarity and stuff it can always be worked on but visual clutter was a huge negative in 6v6 when you saw way too many things on the screen we're kind of approaching that again and it's kind of hard to avoid when you always have new heroes with new visual effects because each of them have to have distinct looks compared to other heroes but i think we're okay and it is a big reason why people fell in love but to like for people to stay in love they need evolution and you got to clean up some of the effects one of my biggest gripes is um like arissa burning arissa gold arissa nanode i think i put this in a video before but a lot of them look the same and a little bit of a tune up there would be kind of nice the clutter is can be cleaned up a little bit in a sense right like you can't stop the volume of abilities coming out but they can all be distinct enough that you understand what's going on See Junkenstein's lab right now where there is a gazillion things on the floor where Ryan's fire strike drops molten lava. There's a Kitsune, there's a Suzu, there's a barrage coming. There was a clip I played earlier today that was just absolute chaos. And I'm like, wait, I'm alive. It was part, it was pretty fun, but like keep all that shit in arcade for now. What a username. All you can eat shrimp for $7.99. What the hell? Hot take. Ryan duels are cringe and it takes the tank away from other responsibilities they may need be needing to perform for their teammates. You know, I didn't think about it this way. I sort of see where you're coming from. And the reason why is because I'm thinking of it not from the Rhine perspective, but from like a Moira 1v, like I've seen that where they're like, oh, they have a mirror match and then they do like a little backline duel. I've seen the clips of like Moira's both in the backline, just 1v1ing each other with Orb and Suck in a room. Like they just have the mirror duel. Like I think the Rhine v Rhine mirror itself and the duel as a, like as a whole is, is like, a cool, you know, hey, we're, we're doing this matchup, but like if you're like exclusively just like hard focusing the Rhine and you're only swinging at them and not doing anything else, then yeah, I, I can see why that can be a little annoying to play with um, if they take away from that responsibility. But the fact that they'd be like, hey, do you want to play Rhine in all chat? And the other person says, yeah, let's play Rhine. And they're both Rhine players. I think that is fine. Just play that matchup. But like, obviously just don't tunnel in. Like play the game normally, but it just so happens to like call out that Ryan matchup. That's fine. Hot take, when climbing the ladder, sometimes you have to play or reward bad styles of Overwatch to get the W. Good Overwatch is your ability to adapt to the situation. Some games are very tactical while others are like wrestling in mud. Adjust and you can win more games. That is absolutely not a hot take. Adaptability is a skill in climbing an Overwatch. There are things that can be a mistake in a normal circumstance in a higher ELO lobby that are not mistakes uh, in a certain ELO because they're not punishing you and if remember if you make a mistake if you think it's a mistake but you're not punished it is therefore not a mistake that's a that's a recent quote you press until you feel like you're going to get punished and you can get away with a lot more you have to kind of get a feel for what they're doing if they're not going to punish you for standing in a way more riskier position you take you take what you get could be bad style but as long as you're hyper aware of it and you know how to adapt back if they are punishing it that's good hot take blade dragon blade is the worst ultimate in the game after previously hitting gm and trying to play genji more since 
since then. I feel like ever since Blade has become three shot, it feels almost impossible to kill without Nano. As well as the fact that so many heroes have incredibly easy escapes or counters to the Blade. You pop it, you're an instant target for the enemy team. It takes three swings to kill most characters and so many heroes can just escape. While I've adapted and can acknowledge that part of the skill with Blade is looking out for people on cooldown so they can't escape, it still feels like such a terrible ult for how much it does compared to how much risk you're taking uh, using it. The take that it's the worst ultimate in the game, I disagree. I don't think it's the worst, but it's certainly not as powerful as it was in Overwatch 1. That much I can agree with. They did nerf it from 120 to 110 per swing right now, and everybody has more HP at 250 on average, right? So it's just no longer a freeze, press the button and always get three to 5K. Lately though, like I think it's an okay, I think it's like a mid tier DPS ultimate. Good Genjis are still getting value out of it because you're not just 1v5ing and killing everything. You kind of have to use it. The skill part, like you said, where you know they have no escape or you use it as a cleanup tool or literally a zoning blade. You kind of have to pop it in conjunction with your team. Previously, it's like the blade is the play, but now the blade is part of the play where you either initiate with it to bait cooldowns or your team has to use something else, bait abilities, then you blade second. Like it's not just a one, this is like it. But they've kind of tuned down a lot of DPS ultimates in the same way. A lot of other ultimates, as the game has evolved, accomplish the same thing with the same level of power. Like Tactical Visor used to be like, we're just visoring, that's it, because it's strong. But now there's Lamp, Suzu, Defense Matrix, that lasts way longer than a previous, like there's a lot of things to counter a lot of DPS ults in. It's kind of, a Blade has kind of evolved and progressed in the same kind of line of power as all the other uh, DPS ults. So they all kind of feel pretty normal to me right now. I think the tank ultimates were scaled to be the best ults in the game for the most part, with supports as well. A lot of the support and tank ults are the best. Hot take, Sombra is begging to be a support. Her utility, her ultimate, and not to mention how well she works as more of a support in Mirror Watch. Imagine the potential with her character supporting the team. I did play the Mirror Watch Sombra and I thought that was pretty cool where you hack the teammate and it heals them or whatever. Um, but I don't wouldn't say she's begging to be a support. Like she has an identity to be like a stealth assassin style character and she still can sort of do that. It's just frustrating to play against for a lot of players, which is why she's received rework after rework after rework. And people just hate stealth in any video game. Anything that's invisible and it feels like it's out of your control where you don't know where they're coming from just feels bad. So I get why people feel that way, but I think it's fine, it's part of the game. So I wouldn't say, I'd say it's, it is quite a take to say she's begging to be a support, but the Mirror Watch did show that she can lend itself to some support abilities. And the best course of action is to take the idea of what she can do in that support aspect of Mirror Watch and kind of translate those into new abilities that can be used for future supports. Hot take, Moira should be able to buff her damage by healing her allies. Instead of needing to deal damage to charge her healing resource, DPS Moiras are everywhere in metal ranks and actively encouraging Moira players to heal would be a nice quality of life change for those lower rank games. Healing and expending your heal juice at the doing damage. You say DPS Moiras are everywhere, but I actually do think if you do this where like you get a damage buff by healing, it might encourage them to heal a little bit, but then they're gonna go fuck off when like you don't want them to. And then just go into the back line and go for the, with their buffed right click second afterwards. I don't think that would discourage DPS Moira's. I think it would encourage it more on average. Blizzard has tried to like iterate a few times with Moira with the whole necrotic orb and damage reduction stuff. The hero lends itself and it has her identity as that low skill floor, pretty low ceiling, but like pretty reliable kind of hero that can do her job and uh, has her mains and she's not, not problematic at all in the high ranks. And I think she's fun for those who play it and maybe unfun for those who, you know, feel like there's that deep flanking DPS more on their team that isn't healing them. But like, I just encourage players to roll with the punches. It can be annoying to not be healed, but like if they're doing it right and applying pressure as the flank Moira, you just don't see it tangibly on the scoreboard because you're not getting healed, but they're pulling attention away, which means you're taking less damage as, as well. Obviously the problem is if that's their only mindset where they're only flanking and they're one dimensional and they're not actually going back to heal a team when it's the right play. And it can be annoying, but that's like not to say people don't do that with other heroes, like pure DPS Kirikos or DPS only Anas, or like Barbie Blaster Mercy only kind of players. Like these, all these kind of players exist, but believe it or not, like adding the DPS flank Moira when you know, like that kind of play style or that play when you know they have nothing to like counter your, your orbs or your coalescence is actually pretty strong. That is actually how you adjust and, and, and climb a little bit. I actually Vaude reviewed the number one Moira 
like a year and a half ago, Nolan, he kind of retired. He hasn't played in a while, but he was rank one in like season two or three. It's on this channel, the Karku Akai channel. I had him for my one Moira tip guest like four years ago as well. He was notorious for being mostly flank Moira. He was really good and he was just explaining why he would, when, why and when he would go into the back line. And it's pretty insightful. I think it's called like, I spectated the number one flank Moira or DPS Moira and it's like, whoa. You win the game by, you know, adding value in your own way. Healing a teammate as Moira is one way to add value. Also, eliminating, completely killing a person in the enemy backline if the Moira is doing it right is another way to add value. May not feel fun to play with, but it can work. In my opinion, Clash is worse, even worse than 2CP and doesn't belong in Overwatch. I just had a six minute fight on the match point on the middle objective. It felt like I was playing Battlefield or something. The shit is ass. Clash is not my favorite. It is my least favorite mode as well. I agree. Is it worse than 2CP? No. I think 2CP was worse. I absolutely fucking loathed rolling first point, feeling good on Hanamura, and then going to second, and then spending five, six minutes attacking the same fucking top right door for six minutes and making no progress. And then they just keep, you're about to win, then they just spawn and then take it back, and I got no ticks. That was so annoying to play. Clash right now, at least it's fast. It's a little scrappy but there's actually a lot more openings and angles. Hanamura is just a little worse because there's only one fucking room to attack that felt optimal. And if you weren't on the same page, it was so annoying. Maybe the game mode could be iterated a bit more with like a more open sight line. And if they fix the map itself, not the game mode itself, like they opened up some chokes and gave you more options to attack with. Right now, Clash is my least favorite, but I don't hate it more than 2CP. This recent patch, they tweaked uh, Clash, if you read the patch notes, with different capture times, I think B and D, have like a 10% different like timer on certain clash times. And then the last one with the ticks goes from like 0 0.7 to 1.1 to 1.4 X speed compared to the previous one. The last few clash maps I played were very back and forth and they were like 13 minutes because it was just nonstop fights. And low key, it felt kind of crazy. I'd actually felt super high intensity and I didn't mind it that much. It was close, but it was like, holy shit. Like there was always action. Again, when I go back to the Hanamura one, going back to the same single door because there was no option, it's annoying because it was a long ass run there too. At least with Clash, if I spawn, like there's action right away, which kind of feeds my dopamine enough to say it's okay. That's it for the takes here. Thanks for submitting them and uh, submit more in the comments. And that's all I'm gonna say this week. Goodbye.